Do you ever find yourself trapped and constrained by the limits of Power BI and the size that you can fit everything in? Well, in this Wise Out Short, we're going to show you three different methods for increasing the size of your reports. Here is our problem report in question. We can see I've got a couple of different cards and I've got a couple of visuals and I want them all to fit in. So to do this, the first way, the quickest way, is to actually change the dimensions of our report. If I go to a page with nothing selected, I can click on the format roller and the visualization pane, go down to page size, and instead of having 16 by nine, Use the drop down and change this to custom. I would like roughly twice the size, so I'm going to increase my height to 1400. Obviously, how this will appear to your front end user may be different depending on the screen size they have, they may need to scroll up and down. But all I would need to do at this point is just resize each of my visuals until they fit. And now I have plenty of room to fit in as many visuals as I want to include. So that's probably the quickest way of getting extra, but it's not necessarily the most aesthetically pleasing. So let's try the second method, using rotating visuals. No, I don't mean that they're going to be spinning around like some crazy thing from The Exorcist. Instead, what we're going to do is have each visual represent two visuals. In this case, my profit card is going to represent profits and profits last year. The same thing I'm going to do here with my charts. So what I need here is a way to be able to change between the two that I'm interested in. To do this, I'm going to go to the Home tab and I'm going to choose Enter data. That's going to create me a new table. I'm going to rename my column as rotating and I'm going to do a nice easy simple two different variants for each visual. I'm going to rename my table to rotating table and I'm going to choose load. I'm going to use this to be able to detect which my user has chosen based on the filter that's available. Once that's loaded, I'm going to create a measure that detects this. So over to your measure table, right click, new measure. I'm going to call this measure swap profits. And because I've only got two, I'm going to use an F. If you had more than two, you'd use a switch. F. One of my favorite functions in DAX, selected value. Returns the value when there's only one item or an alternate result. So I'm going to say return from my rotating table. So that's going to return one or two. If they haven't selected something, I'm going to have it default to one. Close my bracket. So that's returned what the user has selected. I want to check if that is equal to the number one. Of course, if they've chosen nothing, it's going to default to one comma. If they've left it, if they've chosen one, then I'm going to say return the profits measure. Otherwise, I'm going to say comma. If it's two, then return the profits last year. Close your bracket. So if the item that's returned is one, return the profits measure, otherwise return the profits last year measure. If I wanted to include the text, all I would need to do is click in front of my measure, open a set of quotation marks and type in the text that I want to see. So in this case, profits with a colon and then an ampersand. And then the same thing with my profits last year. I'm going to type in some literal text, profit last year. Ampersand. Hit return. Now all I need to do is go to the card, my profits card, give that a click, remove the original measure, profits, 
and add in my brand new swap profits measure. Because I haven't changed the filter on it, it is going to default to 1, which was the first item in there, my standard profits. Now all I need to do is turn off that category label. And we're going to get rid of all of these extra ones we don't need. So I'm going to click on each one, holding control, select my unwanted charts, and just delete them. I can now rearrange this to fit better on the screen and of course increase my visual size because I've got half as many visuals now. And each of these now has one of those measures in it. The process is exactly the same whether you're using a card or if you're using something fancier like one of the charts. To swap between these two, I need a way for my user to interact with the report, so I'm going to go with a slicer in this case. Fifth row, first column, slicer. And then into this slicer from the rotating table, I can have my rotating and have my one and two. If you want this to be a single select, you could use a tree map or, in the top right hand corner of your slicer, change this to a list or drop down, go to your format roller, and change your selection control to single select. They can now swap between the two. We've used the numbers 1 and 2, but you could have always used a bit of text as well. Or, if you want to make this a little bit more dynamic, you can go to your ellipses in the visualisation pane, choose Get More Visuals, and download the Play Axis. The Play Axis is a slicer, but one with a little twist. It can automatically scroll through each file you pass in. So in this case, I can add rotating, and when I click play, it will cycle through the two different options that I've got. You can choose things like, do you want this to cycle for infinity? Do you want it to automatically start when they move on to the page? Or even how long you want it to linger in each mode for? So in this case, I'm going to go for 2000 milliseconds, which is around two seconds. Now it lingers on each one for two seconds before moving on to the next. The final method we're going to look at is using bookmarks. So on here, again, I have loads and loads of different visuals going on. And what I'm going to do is actually stack them on top of one another. So to make this slightly easier, if we select all of our visuals, so I'm going to select all of this bottom row, so each of my cards and each of my charts. I'm going to right click and I'm going to group them together. That means both the visibility, the position, etc. can all be controlled in one place. With that done, I'm going to move these on top of the existing visuals. So they're sitting bang on top. This is going to help add to the illusion that we've only got one set. With that done, we now need our bookmarks. So if you go to the View tab and go along to Bookmarks, we'll also need our Selection pane, which controls the visibility. You'll see I've already created a group for my back objects. And we've just created a group for our front objects. So I'm going to double click on that. I'm going to rename this one to front object. Clicking on the eyeball to the right of your group will hide the entire group. The bookmark allows you to save the state of the page. So in this case, I'm going to save the visibility of my objects. So hide the back group, go to your bookmark page and choose add, and I'm going to rename this to front on. 
I'm then going to do the opposite, hide my front objects, unhide my back objects, and add another bookmark called back on. Now if I switch between my bookmarks, I'm swapping which group is visible. Some fine tuning with position is going to be required, but apart from that, the illusion is nearly there. Finally, all you need to do is attach these onto either an image or a shape or a button. So in the insert tab, I'm going to go to buttons and I'm going to add myself a blank button. I'm going to position that somewhere on the page. And what was formerly your visualization pane has become format button. I'm going to go down to button text, turn that on. Show, what we call it, profits. Scroll down in your format button to action. Turn your action on. Change the type from back to bookmark. And change your bookmark to our front on. Duplicate your button. So we've got a second one in there. And then we'll just tweak the second one. So go back to your button type, to your button text, show, in this case it'll be units sold, down to your action, change that to this time you're back on. Your front end user will now be able to click on these to swap between them. They'll just left click, but remember when you're in developer mode you have to hold control. So we're going to hold control. Click on show profits and that will change to our profits. And if we click on show units sold, it swaps to our units sold. We did this for the whole page, but you could also have done it for little groups. So you could have, for example, your two charts. You could actually have those swapping into things like tables. And you can also use this technique for doing things like visibility. I hope you've enjoyed this Wise Owl short and it helps you deal with those bigger report pages to try and fit them on the teeny weeny little Power BI display. If you're going to use this, leave in the comments how you think you're going to make use of it. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.